Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone out there. Uh, everyone out there in virtual land. It's good to see you again on another Wednesday, another Bible study. Amen. Here at Union. We just want to welcome you in right now. Amen. Uh, some of you may have been getting off of work right now. We pray that, you know, that you still have energy right now, that you that you pray to God and ask you to help you to stay encouraged and keep you awake right now. Amen. So you can have a, uh, to enjoy this time with us. As we go into the word today, we're going to talk about wisdom today, amen? But the whole world needs wisdom, amen? So we just want, we want you to be encouraged right now, amen? We want you to be alert right now. We want you to be able to uh, hear the word of God right now. If you got your children with you right now, uh, send them with you right now, amen? Put them, put them in the room with you right now so they can hear the word of God with all of us, amen? So let's, let's enjoy this time. Uh, here in Columbus, it's, it's raining right now, but you know what? God gives the sunshine inside our heart, amen? So look, let's praise the Lord together. I want you to stand to your feet right now. Give God a hand praise, amen. Because we're going to do call to worship, amen. We're going to have scripture and we're going to have prayer, amen. So, so let me tell you this what the Bible says. The Bible says, praise ye the Lord, amen. Praise ye the Lord, all his nation. Praise the Lord, everyone, amen. For the Lord's mercy and his kindly, kindness is great towards all of us, amen. And the truth of the Lord will endure forever. If y'all at home right now, just give God a hand praise. Come on, I can hear you right now. I, I need to praise God. Amen. Give God a hand, a hand clap, amen. amen. Praise amen. his name, for he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Now, I'm going to uh, read a scripture for you right now. One of my favorite scriptures. I'm, I'm going to go to Psalms 150, amen. And the reason why I like it, amen, because it talks about hitting symbols and banging symbols. symbols. And I like hitting the symbols on the drums, amen. So if you have your Bible in there, you can turn to Psalms 150. Psalms 150. And Psalms 150 reads, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Amen. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Amen. Now, if you would, can you uh, give God some reverence right now? And just yes, God. Your hands and close your eyes. Amen. And then I want you guys, when we go to God in prayer, be sincere, amen. If you got a TV on or people are talking right now, let's cut, cut it all off, amen. Cut it all off and let's go to God, amen. First, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today. We thank you, Lord, for the love that you have for us. We thank you, Lord, for loving us first. Thank you, Lord, for loving us such a way, Lord, that you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus, to die for our sins, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for raising him, Lord, with all power in his hands in the heavens. And earth, Lord, thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, for him ascending to heaven and, and sending us back a comforter, Lord, his Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for how you have brought us through this day. We thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, for how you have placed food in our bellies, Lord Jesus, a roof, a shelter over our head, Lord, and, and, and a variety of clothes, Lord, we can put on our back, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for the vehicle you, Lord. drive, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, for our jobs, Heavenly Father, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord, for the ones you have kept, Lord Jesus, and they can't work right now, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, how, how you love the souls, Heavenly Father, Lord. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you would just keep those ones who have lost loved ones. Be with those families, Lord Jesus. Lord. And Lord, we ask you, Heavenly Father, Lord, that everyone right now will be attentive to what you have to say, Lord, for this is an important time. We pray, Lord, that people don't take this time for granted, Lord, but they take the 45 minutes out of their time right now, Lord, to hear what you have to say to them, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, they can go out to the world, Lord, and share the gospel to everybody, Lord, so they can draw all men to you, them, and Father, Lord. We praise you, Lord, we give you glory and all the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, where you are, give God some praise. Come on, where you are, give God some praise. Come on, where you are, give God some praise. We want to thank Reverend David. We thank God for you tonight. We know that many in Central Howard are in the midst of storms. Hoping your storm is moving fast and causing no damage, no hurt or harm, and that is passing over. Amen. The storm is almost. So I can see the sun 
peek into the cloud, the storm is almost gone. So I thank God for you tonight. And y'all pray, pray, and lift up our virtual team in your prayers. We're praying for you. Make sure you send your prayer requests in. Make sure you send your prayer requests in. Tonight, send your prayer requests in. And we pray for you. We're going to go to God on your behalf when we at the close this evening. So make sure you just send those in so we can articulate those the best that we can. And we're just going to have praise. And I'm at the praise team. Brother McDaniel and Sister Lock is prepared themselves to come now. And they're just going to lift up the name of Jesus in song and bless you. And then we're going to go in the word and deal with a very, very interesting and critical topic that we all need to work in and live in. Wisdom. Proverbs number one. Wisdom. We're going to be back at past hot seat tonight. So y'all going to stay with us as we sanitize and prepare. Amen. For God is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all, we ask to thank by the power that works in us. But before I conclude, though, do this now. Make sure you get out here and share this. Share this. We thank God you're joining us on Facebook Live. Share it. Share it. You watch party. Get the gospel out. Share the good news. Continue to support the work. You can give. All of you giving digitally. Give the fire. All you mailing in. 3452 First Avenue, Bourbon Crest, Ohio, 43123. Y'all are outstanding. We're in the midst of phase one of our remodeling. It is going great. It is going great. So y'all got to keep coming on and funding. And we can continue to do the work of the Lord. This yeah. building, this church has always opened this door for civic, for weddings, for home going, after school programs, summer academic class, classes, substance abuse programs. But now we got to rehab the building so we can do it even at a greater level. Amen. The building, the building needs attention. So we're about building up the building, remodeling building that we can build more lives. So continue to give again. Give the fire is our digital means. Get it right off of our website. And also you can mail it into the church and get our address 3452 First Avenue in Stroke Village, Urban Crest. You can get that on our website. However you do it, drop it off if you want to. Trustee Brother Grant is out there on Sunday morning receiving to the glory of God. We are here and we're standing on the side of rock for you. Where y'all get God some praise and give our praise to a moment to come together. Amen. Amen. Give y'all a moment to come together. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're just going to do for you just a couple of acapella songs. We want to praise the Lord together. Amen. 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 Everyone should know this one. How great is our God. Come on, sing. Sing to me how great.
together real quick and just join together. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to go back and say leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus. Amen. 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 What? Of the fellowship. translation. I'm going to start out with the King James translation. 
and we may read a couple of those tonight just to get you um, going tonight a little bit and because we're dealing with uh, wisdom for living a prosperous life in the Lord. Uh, really the antithesis of dealing with life in death. Are you going to live with wisdom and why? Are you going to live foolishly to your own condemnation and demise? So that's the question we rise today with all that we got going on in these troubling times. We thank God for you today. So I wanted to continue. Sister Wiggins taught this with the ladies on um, Sunday night at 7 with our ladies in the word, our call in and then men uh, Monday night faith with the men call in so if you want to figure it out give us a contact and we give you all the information you can join us for the ladies on Monday and the men on Monday and then young people union night get with uh, you pastor Reverend David here they're doing zoom with the young people and staying connected I know he has another zoom session coming up real soon so we just thank God we're trying to and we're going to be not trying we are staying connected for the kingdom amen we're here at the Pastor's Round Table. Let me read this scripture. It's just a few verses. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel. So right here they tell you, uh, we start out with who Solomon is. He's, he is the third king in the line of kings for Israel. We had King Saul, then we had King David, and then we had King Solomon. And Solomon is known for wisdom. And this uh, Proverbs is one of the books of the, uh, what they call the wisdom literature in the Bible. So you have uh, Psalm, Proverbs, the book of Job, uh, Ecclesiastes, and then the Song of Solomon. And uh, so I would encourage you to dwell in all those, read through those. Again, a proverb is a principle. Uh, it's a principle, a principle for living more than a kind of commandment, but we know that through the word of God, through the revelation of God, we see God's will and how God would want us to live to glorify Him. Somebody don't say amen out there. Amen. I can't hear y'all out there. Y'all say amen. amen. Facebook folks here this live. I bet you some amen going in there. I come in your driveway tonight and start saying at one in the morning, real loud, that the storm is almost gone. Anyway, <laughs> let me read this text. So, verse 2, let me go right into verse 2. We had an introduction of Solomon. So in verse 2 it says, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. So you get a highlight. What is this book about? What are these problems about? To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to re receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. And we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to deal with justice, judgment. I'm sorry, I deal with justice. I'm dealing really with righteousness, dealing with judgment, discernment. I'm dealing with equity, equity, I could be dealing with what we would call integrity. So let me go on in verse 4. To give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. So we're looking into the lens of the more mature and wise speaking to the younger. But we have to understand the difference now. Let's not, let's not, 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 let's not mix up and experience with wisdom. Wisdom is the righteous. The righteous application of righteousness, of the right way. So it's applying that knowledge the right way that pleases God. That's the definition for wisdom. Applying said knowledge that it may please God. So you're going to apply said knowledge that it pleases God. So in verse 5, it says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, a man of understanding shall attain a counsel. And we're seeing a lack of that today. Mm. We're seeing a lack. We're trying to spoke, trying to tell us but what we see with our eyes. We ain't seeing. There's some circumstances that we don't see. Yet we know that, hey, before we bound, handcuffed, you drop them on your knees. Now they're making a game of that family out here. Oh and, 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 and so where is your humanity? And will racism be the demise of our country? And mercy, Jesus. So, uh, uh, we we missing this. We have got to with all this. Doesn't mean that fancy wasn't VP. We're talking about there's no systemic institutionalized racism. This country was built on racism. Mm -hmm. And we're going to rise above it because we're dealing with an understanding of racism is 
Then over the hatred in our heart. And the Bible says, we ain't entering the kingdom of heaven with hatred. That means help people out there. You ain't entering the kingdom of heaven with hate in your heart for nobody. Have mercy in Jesus. Love the Lord thy God with what all of your heart. Have mercy. Your mind. Your soul. Your very being. And love thy neighbor as thyself. I'm going to finish this text, I promise you. So to understand the proverb in verse number 6 and the interpretation and the words of the wise and that are saying, in the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the fool despise wisdom and instruction. Now I'm going to have Reverend David and, he, and he, if you want to spirit lead him in the dick like I did, we're here to teach, we're here to encourage, and we're here to challenge. Amen. And we may walk holy. Wisdom. Walk wisdom with the things of God. Reverend David, come on and read the text for us. No, no, no. Back to one. I want you to read the verse seven verse. We just don't. We don't have to eat tonight. It's the verse seven verses. Okay. Verse uh, it says, "These are the problems of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline to help them understand the insight of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives to help them do what is right." just and fair. These proverbs will give insight to the simple knowledge and discernment to the young. Let the wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. Let those with understanding receive guidance by exploring the meaning in these proverbs and parables, the words of the wise and their riddles. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Man, so here's the question, Reverend David. Here's the question is, we read this scripture, we said, and that's God to give us understanding. I think that's a great teaching point right there, Reverend David, is that we have revelation from God. And one of the jobs, the tasks of the Holy Spirit is to give us understanding of God's revelation that through the eye of our heart, the mind, the mind and the heart together, we get understanding and then wisdom says, take our understanding and apply it rightly. To apply it rightly. So here's, here's the question is, and I think that in these days we're living in and, and folks get behind microphones and folk who are uh, protesting and standing up uh, against uh, injustice as, as Jesus said he does. Looking at Luke, cha Luke the fourth chapter, I believe it was, and he declared, uh, 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 his purpose and, and the marginalized and, and the hurting and he stands up. So we as a church stand up against injustice. So we see those who are standing up uh, against injustice, marching against injustice and and if we don't want to deal with something like racism, we want to point the finger at him. And I love those out here attempting to say that it's not as bad as we say it is. Mm. Uh, I, 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 look, I, 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 God has changed my life. He's put love in my heart. Where is it? Uh, but it's foolish conversation in a disbelief, and you devalue uh, your input when you come from that premise. And uh, so, either gain understanding, seek knowledge, and gain understanding. Uh, try to now justify the abuse of others. So, Reverend David, here's the question. We have a choice to walk wisely. We already find what walking wise is. Or to walk unwise. And in this challenge of trying to stand up for humanity and human rights uh, and those who will mix in to cause trouble and seek destruction, uh, we look at this text in your study of this text. How can you speak to those out there who feel justified in leaving from a solid, righteous standpoint and dip their hand into iniquity and destroy and take what is not there to destroy or take? How can you help us with that? Brother? Can you help us with that tonight? Well, when you, when you use the word destroy and take, I thought about Bible was saying when the adversary comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You know, so if, if, if you are you know, speaking to the 
protesting, you were protesting and you were stealing and destroying and even killing can't be good. Mm. They can't be there. There, that's that's not wisdom at, at all. You know, uh, even if you do have knowledge of uh, Martin Luther King, knowledge of Malcolm X, knowledge of black leaders, if you are doing evil. All you do is have knowledge without the wisdom. Without what? Well, say that, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Knowledge without the wisdom, without the wisdom, can lead you down. And, and really, you become ineffective, don't you? Because yes. it talks about that. That is a pathway of destruction. So here, if you're trying to stand up for righteousness, you're trying to stand up against injustice, and we go down that pathway of destruction and unrighteousness, we lose our ability to move forward and positively and make a change and a difference in this world. That's interesting to me. So, so we have a choice, life or death, righteous or unrighteous. So we deal with the three characteristics of one who is wise, walking wisely. We talk about judge, you know, just so rightly, judge, righteousness, judge, the right thing. Then we talk about judgment, the ability to discern what is right. So judges are applying what is right. These are all characteristics of a wise person. So when you go in there and grab that new Nike bag, <laughs> how will that help the cause? How will that speak to that brother on the ground with another grown man's a co-worker? One that another co-worker said he know he knew him. And yet he stayed on his neck unto death for eight minutes in 40, I believe, 43 or 47 seconds. Anybody know? 43 seconds. I want to get it right. 43 or somebody Google that for me. I want to know the exact number because I know it's a long time. Amen. And I'm telling all those out there who are play at this and mock this like they mock Jesus. I'm going to be dealing with the mocking of Jesus. On Sunday, I'm going to be dealing with the Matthew, the 27th chapter, when they mock Jesus. Come on, let me help you. you know, let me show you how to do it. Let me put my leg, help me, Holy Ghost, on your neck. Don't play at it. Don't mock. Everything in the game. Oh, my goodness. If that's your son, if that's your brother, if that's your friend, if that's your uncle, if that's your nephew, if that's your cousin, if that's your co-worker, if that's your fellow believer, and I challenge you today, I challenge you today openly to our white brothers and sisters who profess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, is that you got to condemn racism in your church back. Amen. That's walking with wisdom. That's walking with wisdom. Discerning what is right. And applying that knowledge in such a manner that it glorifies our God. And we cannot lose sight of this when Paul said, I fought a good fight. We had to fight a good fight. Are y'all still with me out there? Keep on reaching out and tell them, I want these numbers up here. I want a thousand people watching on Wednesday. I want two thousand watching. I want three thousand and four thousand coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Not because we're so good, but because he is so good. And I don't want you to go to battle without the proper armor on. I like what David told old King Saul when the King Saul tried to dress him up in his armor. Mm -hmm. David said, that's all right. I, I got something. I got something for the Goliaths of the world. I got something for the enemies of the world. My God will cover me. My God will protect me. My God will armor me and arm me. And she got to I'm going to fight and fight this battle without God. I need all of what he has. Mm -hmm. And then so, to deal with wickedness, to deal with wickedness in high places. I need everything from God to deal with wickedness in high places. And the church ought to know about wickedness. We've been battling wickedness. We've been battling wickedness. We're standing up on a solid rock. We're going to put the whole arm of God on the stuff, stand up against. So, so let me move forward. Let me move forward from the day. Well, I may keep him because he's been the rabbi on this lesson. 
And I'm a beloved is Sister Locker over here, Brother McDaniel, Sister Cindy, but I'm going to keep Rabbi David in the hot seat right now. We got to learn about wisdom. We got to learn about Amen. we have to learn about justice and, and judgment and equity. Let me go back to Revelation of David. I can't do right if I don't know right. Amen. So how can I do the things to please God? If I don't know all I can about God, what is the challenge you see facing men and women today who attempt to go out there for better without God? Yes. And uh, you depend on yourself. Trust me, you will let yourself down. Mm -hmm. You know, you will let yourself down. Uh, try, try to get angry without, without consulting God. Uh, try to, try to have a discussion with somebody without consulting God. Have mercy. Try, try to, try, try to protest. With everything that's going on without God, and you will you will find yourself in, a, in a, a terrible terrible position where you you realize that you can't do it without God. Amen. And that's what we see right now. We see a lot of even, even Christians. You know, we see the anger taking over. You know, which is understandable. You see frustration taking over, but you still cannot do it without God. So now I got you for the time of leaving us. And I want to make sure that everybody is staying connected. Those who are here, y'all staying with us out here. Y'all staying with us. Amen. I'm going to call my names out. I'm going to call my names out. Are you those who are not there? You better stick with this because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Get back to McDaniel right now. We living in times where wisdom is necessary. Amen. Amen. Aspect of our life. You know, Proverbs 3, trust the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, all our ways, acknowledge him, he will direct our path. It says in verse 7, we're going to deal with this fear factor. The fear factor. Earlier tonight, I was outside broadcasting live in the midst of the tornado sounds and utilizing uh, what we call general revelation. Seeing God in nature, mm -hmm. seeing Elohim at work, and broadcasting out there, and just reverencing that fear. That word fear is not about being frightened of God. It's about reverencing God. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the challenge of those who are heart and mind and hands are trying to make a difference but they don't see the need of God or his church, which can't separate. As we've seen in the past, all of the great movements in this country have been birthed through the church. Amen. You know, prayer meetings were essential to get that courage, strengthen our faith, to go up, sit like I said, something to sit at that counter or to march, knowing that they were going to turn German shepherds and others. I believe uh, someone in high places talked about the people near the White House that got any closer that they had some vicious dogs for them. Sure did. Uh, I pray, I pray and didn't say that. I pray in that the one who sworn an oath that all are created equal, that all people of this nation need to be treated rightly. Amen. So in those sanctuaries and in those basements of the church house, in those living rooms of the believer, 
they were praying for a mighty move of God. And my fear is, my concern is, that we're leaving out here, some are, many are, not only without God in the battle, but without God on purpose. And that speaks to an absence of the fear of the Lord, as it is said in this proverb, or the reverencing of the Lord. As a young man who's loved the Lord, father is a pastor, mother was the first lady, and, and so forth, and had been serving in God's church for a long time. Uh, and a mature brother, I got to put that word. Do you see a lack? And I'm going to stick with the church. I think sometimes the church tries to fix the world instead of do the element of beam in our own eyes. Mm -hmm. What do you see the state of reverence in God in the church? What do you, what do you, what's in your heart and what do you see? Oh man, just even looking at the scripture, uh, you know, where it says fear in the Lord, we know that that means to reverence God, but what I have think, I think so many Christians do, and I have this for so long, I think we have took that reverence and we, th we took that fear in God as to live a life of trying not to do wrong, instead of actually living a life to do right by God. And to do right by God, you have to know who God is, you have to have knowledge of God, so, you know, when we talk about reverence in God, it's about living a life to do right, to do right by him, and not living a life always focusing on trying not to do wrong. I can't do this, I can't do that. So, well, Reverend, let me leap on there, because this is a hot seat. Wait a minute, Reverend. Is the church trying not to do wrong, or is the church trying not to do too many things wrong? Because there's some proclivities, mm -hmm. there's some sins out there we like. So we try to play that juggling game. Mm -hmm. I'm not as bad as somebody else. So we're really not trying to do wrong, mm -hmm. not to displease God. Are we trying not to do too much wrong that God won't utterly destroy us in our own mystiology of right. who right. God is? Yeah, I get it. I, I, I can see that. Totally, I, I can see that. that there's certain things that we would try not to do wrong, thinking that God would be okay with it. <laughs> we try, I think too many times that we labor hard in church stuff, um, you know, Peretti Law 20, do 80% of the work, and unfortunately in most congregations that, that, that Peretti Law is, is, is applicable, um, maybe 30% is really more important than the majority. Um, we need to change that church. And all of us have gifts to give. All of us have knowledge and talent to apply right. The problem we have when we live that way is that we really are challenged uh, with the fullness of our relationship with God. Because out of reverence, not fear, but out of because see that way you described to me is operating. When I'm operating in reverence and awe of God, in my adoration, my worship to God, in my realization that I am not God, mm -hmm. I'm not God, He's God, I'm not God, and thus I can humble myself, and now I desire to please Him because I what? I love Him. Because I'm not trying to work my way in. I'm not trying to let my good outweigh my bad. That's legalism. <laughs> I thank God for the word to identify God's do's and don'ts. I ain't got a problem with that at all. But my service is based out of our love for God that then transforms us that we have love for humanity. And there I say that racism is the absence 
of love for humanity, God's people. Say that again, Reverend, then you might say good. That's hate. And will hate end the kingdom of no. We must, all of us must repent. So when you're challenged, and you know, and I always tell the story when Rodney King Birdie came in some years ago, I was a younger man, and I was working second shift for the state of Ohio, and that Birdie came in and they started rioting and protesting uh, two different things. And in LA, it is frustrated and angry because again, we had another video and folk trying to tell us we didn't see what we saw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember coming home that night, I told the story before, uh, being so filled with anger and rage, see, my righteous indignation, I allowed the flesh to take over. Motivated by adversary, don't forget this out there. You do have an adversary who will play on your weaknesses, your desires, in the moments of anguish in your life. And I drove home so mad, I was speeding and driving erratically because I wanted to encounter a police officer mm -hmm. to seek my vengeance because I was tired of institutionalized Racism, racism at every turn, falling in the store, walking alone, the sudden and stuff. Always got to speak first and smile so folk are not intimidated by your large blackness. Uh, going for jobs and treated differently than others going for the same job. The list goes on. Being pulled over, driving white black. The list goes on. Can I get the same interest rate that others get? Trying to prosper while black. The list goes on. And that night I had enough. So I leaped from Reverson and, and thus wisdom that I needed. But let me help you out. God's grace. I got I got to get to it. See, this whole context is of this initial part of this proverb is. A father speaking to a son, an elder speaking to a younger, and teaching people how to live discipline and, and to do what is right in the sight of God. And, and on that night, in my desire to seek revenge and vengeance, God's grace carried me home. I didn't see nobody on the road. Now, not only I didn't see a police officer, I saw nobody on the road. Well, in the morning, nobody gonna see people on the road. First lady gonna make me go through and get a Taco Bell when she was pregnant. I don't eat Taco Bell now because of that. Every night I had to go to Taco Bell and get a Taco Bell while she carried our son. Lord have mercy. Nobody was on the road. No police officer, nothing. And I got home frustrated because I didn't see one. Until I realized something. He looks beyond our faults. And sees our needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you will reverence God in our imperfect state, if we will seek wisdom and share wisdom. And see, let me help you. It's hard to walk wise if you don't know nothing about Jesus. If you're not growing in your walk with Jesus. If you're not studying. I'm not preaching to the choir. You don't tune in on a Wednesday night. You're in the Bible study, Proverbs 1, and all that we've been teaching in the Word. And live life application. We're trying to be relevant and real to what is going on and understand that you don't have to go to battle without God. Amen. Amen. So I'm right to say it. Then he said, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I minister music, Reverend Johnson couldn't be here tonight. He may be watching right now. Reverend, I know I'm sounding good. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I was serving till I. So I challenge you today in this reference, and I challenge you today in understanding three characteristics again, Reverend David, you've done so well tonight, is, come on, send a prayer request, and we get ready to pray. We're going to let it go tonight, we're going to keep on progressing. These Proverbs are, what are Proverbs again? What are they, Reverend? They're principles. Principles on how we should live. We gain knowledge, seek knowledge, and gain understanding, and then rightly apply that. 
wisdom, have judge, have judgment, ability to judge, rightly to have discernment, judgment, and to have um, equity, or what I call integrity, to do it the right way to do it, rightly and consistently. You know, we get so wrapped up in fairness, and fairness is part of this, but I don't want to deal with righteousness. You know, and I want God to be so. So, you got to seek God. You got to get in that Bible. Not just to study a Sunday school lesson, but to seek God in that Word. Have personal devotion with God every day. Amen. Ask the Holy Spirit to interpret the things of God for you, what you're reading, what you're receiving. And then you got to be able to calm, come on, battlefield of mind. I read that today. Chapter 8, I would think it was. Chapter 8 about we don't hear God trying to speak to us, constantly trying to speak to us because our minds are too busy. So, I don't mind watching all the news and blogs and all this was going on and home going yesterday, another home going yesterday, I'm praying for the family, for George and others, but let me tell you, you got to turn that stuff off once in a while and you got to sit still and calm your mind because God is speaking to you. He's still tenderly calling you today. So if I'm going to reverence God, I got to, I got to acknowledge that I got to sit still. I got to get my mind still that I may hear from God. If you have any questions, email me at Pastor E at Union Baptist Urban Quest, uh, dot org, or you can DM Pastor E off of Facebook. DM, is that how y'all say it? Young folk? Is that right? DM me. Personal message me. Direct message me. DM. Amen. Check me out. Check me out. Check me out. I'm still recruiting a makeup artist for Wednesdays and Sundays since I'm before the camera. Um, put your application in. Thank God for you. Amen. <laughs> and a hairdresser. And a hairdresser. Amen. Let's see, I got joy tonight. In the midst of sorrow. Amen. Amen. Ain't nothing funny what is going on. Amen. But if you want to keep your spirit up, you got to realize that God is fighting with you. Amen. And before you. Amen. If you allow him to. Amen. Walk with the wisdom. Ah, wisdom. Amen. Seek that wisdom. We may we may keep on a little bit on wisdom next Wednesday. Well, no, next Wednesday I'm thinking about the Spirit speaking to me. We may do a uh, old fashioned prayer service where we may come together and praise prayer and proclamation. So the Lord will tell me when we're going to do that as well. So keep keep looking at these proverbs, and uh, and uh, Sunday we're going to be uh, dealing with. Uh, the mocking of Jesus. Uh, I heard a thing about this Shutsy movie coming out about Jesus. I pray that's not true. Uh, but I have to believe it is. And, uh, the misportrayal of Jesus and disciples are. And I want the church to stand up against that. Uh, talk about the body of Jesus in an unholy manner. And um, so I pray that we can stand up for righteousness and apply that. Uh, we're going to ask our director now to give us some prayer requests. So please send your prayer requests in if you haven't. And we're going to have a little talk with Jesus with you. Kay Moss, Angela Keller, Lisa Woods, Anita Moses, Crystal and Steve Phillips, Margaret uh, McGee, Margaret McCoy, uh, Fred Griffin, uh, Kevin Clark, Judy Barron, Linda Williams, Debbie Jackie Connie, Renee Tiffany Solomon, and family, uh, Natalie and Elias Gibson, the Rivers family, our young people, our graduates, um, obviously this, this world today. Good, McDaniel, I see your uh, grandmother, Lady Nikki, sitting in prayer for healing uh, trouble in the world. Uh, Sister Chantel Powell. Samuel told the Israelites in their arrogance to go to battle without God. He should taught them that last week or so. He told them in chapter 7 of 1 Samuel. You gotta come back to God. You gotta come back to God. And the people of God can never afford to leave God and walk in flesh. Brooks family, Neff family.
Stick with me as we pray, share, share, let others know we're praying for you. If you're on a watch party, then uh, we may not see the watch party, so we may not get all your prayer requests. But those in the watch party, please, who, who are authors of the watch party, please share with those that you're praying for them. We need the church praying. We need the church praying. We need the church praying. Where you are, I need your help tonight now. I got the Holy Spirit, but I need all of the righteous praying. I need all of the believers in God praying right now. We lift up Lady Mitchell in our prayers for Lady Mitchell. Pastor Lyle's another year pastoring God's people, 19 blessed years of Bethel, and a birthday as well. We pray for you and the missus. Lady Lyles, we thank God for you. You are a blessing, not only to the church, but to the Union Baptist family in the Urban Crest community and everywhere, really. And uh, we thank God for you, Pastor Sullivan and Pastor Wallace. And, uh, we, we pray for the bereaved family today. We pray for the bereaved family. Reverend David, if you scoot your microphone, I won't touch it. Scoot it closer to me as possible. They can pick up my mic once to go in and out. Get thee behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. You ain't blocking this prayer. Get thee behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Huh? Oh, we plead the blood. We plead the blood. Yes. We plead the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Where you are, where you are, if you will bow your head. Close your eyes as we have a little talk with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Help us, Holy Ghost. Help us, Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord, take away our sins. Mm. Take any hatred out of our hearts, dear Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Clear any impure thoughts, any thoughts of wrongdoing and evil. And violence from others, take them from our minds and our hearts, Jesus. <laughs> but then, Lord, give us courage. Holy Spirit, work through us. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, work through us. Yes. Holy Spirit, work through us. Fill us up, Holy Spirit. Put that whole arm on us. That we're able to stand against the wicked. Slain the arrows of the adversary. Help us, Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, fall fresh on us. Everything, break us, melt us, mold us, and fill us. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, fall fresh upon us. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I need you right now. I need you to go through these candles. I need you to build the cell phone God and touch that you will touch them right now. Thank you, Lord. Uh, but God, we got to do your will, God. We got to do your will. We got to learn more about you. 
bring your will. And our will was wisdom. And we would talk wise. And we would act wise. And we would think wise. God, we need you, Lord. We need to be wise. We need to walk in wisdom, God. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us, Holy Spirit. Let nobody reach out to iniquity. Let nobody touch a gun or any weapon of harm. But God, move yes, through your you church. Lord, thank you. That we walk with courage. Just like our forefathers and foremothers had done. Um, I need you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, I need you, Jesus. Oh, help us, Holy Spirit. We need you. Bless every prayer request, every person. Trust them, the Heavenly Father. Anoint them fresh and anew. Whoo! Yeah, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil. For thou art with us, thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort. God, I prepare the table in the presence of our enemy, thou known as our hand with all our comfort of the Lord and Friday. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we should dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Church, wherever you are across this world. God, let us say amen. 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 We'll see you Sunday. Let me in live. Amen. Y'all pray that you come into the house on Sunday, mask up, pray up, love up, distance up. We're going to glorify the Lord together. Amen. We'll see you Sunday virtually. 11 a.m. Sunday. 11 a.m. Sunday. Are you praying? Share it. Evangelize. Share the good news. We know the Lord will bless you. I feel like taking it out. I'm on the